Welcome, whoa. <laughs> Welcome to worship today here at Mount Lebanon, here in person and online. I want to welcome each and every one of you today to our worship service. We'll be finishing up our Advent series um, with the Grinch. We're having a great time. We've got some special music planned. But most of all, I want you to know that God is in this house. The Spirit is in this house. I feel it each and every time I walk into this building. Each and every time we are gathered as a congregation, the Spirit just comes alive in His house here this morning. Before we get into worship, I'd like to do a couple brief announcements. We will be having our Blue Christmas on Tuesday at 7 p.m., and that is a service of healing and a service of pain. So uh, we've got it all put together now, and we're going to have some special music. We're going to have some time for prayer. We're going to have some moments in which to reflect on our lives together. And then on Christmas Eve at 8 p.m., we will be having our uh, Christmas Eve service, and we've got quite a bit of special music planned for that night and uh, service of the table as well for that night. So I'm looking forward to that as well. And this week, as we enter into this time in which we get closer and closer to celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, what are you doing up here? As we get closer to celebrating our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's birth, it, it just is amazing to me that we as a congregational family can come together in times of joy, in times of mourning, in times of need, and know that our congregational family will be with us and be in spirit with us, even if we can't physically be there each and every day. So uh, I encourage you to make it out to as many uh, of the events this week as you can. Um, I will also be doing our, our weekly, our last pastors on the porch for the, for the year as well. So that will be on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. from live from 149 Studios. So as, as I have dubbed it uh, uh, recently with all the lights flashing and as I, uh, as I uh, broadcast. So tune into that as well. And everything will be uploaded to YouTube uh, the night after, or after the, the celebration. So uh, you can tune in. If you aren't able to physically be there at that exact time, you can tune in whenever you uh, wish. So uh, that is uh, there. I would ask if there's any other announcements that need to be made, but given the fact that you're up here, I'm guessing there is. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask David to join me up here. Because he has one. Well, we've got a couple. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Russ make one to start with. If you wanna. Okay. So, as we approach the end of the year, we always like to show our appreciation to Pastor Joel for everything uh, that he has done this past year. You know, these, this has been two very difficult years uh, for everyone, and especially for uh, churches. Uh, and he has done a remarkable job in keeping the mission and the life of our church alive and going well. Uh, there were several months that we, uh, we functioned solely in a virtual format, watching everything on Facebook Live or YouTube. And then we were finally able to come back together as a church family, which has been wonderful. So thank you all for being here today, but we want to just show our appreciation with a, we have a love offering that we're uh, giving to Pastor Joel today to thank him. So I'm going to hand that one to you. And then also, uh, those of you that have participated in our mission tree the last three weeks uh, for Randomman Community Service, we have a contribution of $500 that we will be, uh, I'm going to give this to Pastor Joel to get to Randomman Community Service this week when they reopen on Tuesday. And uh, thank you for your participation with that. So I'm going to give that to you. Give him a hand. Well, thank you. It, it, it is through God's work that I am able to do this service here each and every week and each and every day for you. So uh, I, I love you all and I appreciate you all. And thank you very much. And thank you for giving to the community the way that this congregation always gives to the community in each chance that uh, 
is offered to you. So uh, thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to uh, have Miss Raven come forward for some special, she tells me some holiday music in a little different form this morning. So. the pastor would be all right if I said a few words. Raven Sizemore works for our two sons, Mark and Rod at Sir Pizza. So I'm in and out all the time there at Sir Pizza. And she is, she is so talented. She goes to Greensboro College and she even made the cover of their special a magazine and presentation of the music awards that she has received. And I kept saying to her, a couple, uh, this has been a couple of years, I said, you, you need to come and play for us at Mount Lebanon. <clears throat> she says, I will, I will, I will, I will. I said, <clears throat> okay. So this year, I asked her again. I said, Raven, I said, have you, uh, you've had plenty of time. I said, have you come up with something for Mount Lebanon at Christmas? And she said, yes, yes, I have, Anne. So I am delighted that Raven is with us this morning. that we are we are 
so, so blessed to be in the presence of so many individuals that have so much musical talent here in our congregational family. And we like to uh, show that talent off whenever we can. So, uh, so know that, uh, and also, please let us know when you've got concerts and stuff so we can come over, we can come up to Greensboro and see you in, in, in your element versus our element. So, so thank you again. This time we're going to light the Advent wreath. Well, don't lose it. Sometimes when we are trying something new, or when we are facing difficult decisions, or when we want to celebrate something, or when we feel lost and alone and uncertain about our life, the universe or anything in between, we need a blessing. We don't always think of it that way or word it like that. We may say we need some advice or we need some support or companions or someone to come along beside and lift us up again so we can see more than the tops of our shoes. We seek a blessing. For many of us, we go home or we ask mom or we ask dad or brothers or sisters or close friends that we grew up with for those are the people that we know best. We want them alongside. We want them to be in, we want to be in their presence. Somehow we know that being there, being home, will make all things better. Maybe it won't be fixed or solved or wished away, but at least we won't be alone. We seek a blessing, and Mary seeked a blessing, faced with an incomprehensible burden and gift, ran to a cousin Elizabeth's house, looking for someone who knew a little about what she was going through, looking for a place to hide until the reality of her condition could become something real. And she received a blessing. The prophet Micah spoke of a blessing coming to an unexpected place, an unassuming town, yet by God's grace would become the means through which God would bless the whole world, that of Bethlehem, the little town of blessing. We continue to seek that blessing today. And as we light these candles of hope, of peace, of joy, and today as we light the candle of love, We light these candles as a sign that we may seek a blessing in our own lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Join me in prayer. Lord, we are gathered here today. We are gathered here in your midst, in your spirit. And we celebrate peace, hope, love, and joy. And we celebrate that of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is to come in just a few more days. Lord, we come to you with our gifts, with our offerings, with our love for you as your unconditional love is shed upon us. Grant us that love each and every day so that we may go forth into your communities and show that love to others each and every day. I ask this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Join us and stand as you are able as we sing our carol today. It came upon a midnight clear. Number 218 in your hymnals and will also be on the screen.
Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to open up for the congregation for prayer requests, praise reports, and whatever is on the hearts, minds, and souls of our congregational family this morning. And I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, Bill Lineberry is going to be having surgery today. Um, they are hoping to remove some blood clots from that have developed in his lungs. So uh, please be in prayer for that surgery as well as the recovery from that surgery. Jay. Yes, I just want to thank God that he's finally got Haley better. And I want to put my sister Linda Zimmerman on the prayer list. She found out that she has cancer. Are there others? For Linda Zimmerman. And Haley's back. Feeling better. <laughs> uh, continue to pray for Erica. You may notice she's not here. She's got a sinus and an ear infection. So uh, uh, she's at home trying to get better so we can uh, go off next week. <laughs> praise to have Jan and Tim back with us today. Yes, praise to have Jim and Tam. Jim, Jim and Tam? <laughs> Pam. <laughs> Pam, I give up. Pam and Tim. Nope. Tim and Jan. There we go. Tim and Jan. I promise there's nothing in the soda that I'm drinking. See, y'all can't leave for that long a period of time if you forget your names. <laughs> oh. Are there others this morning? Yes. I'm good. Day. And while I was saying that, my little dog drug my hose down the hall. Well, that started it all. <laughs> then I had to get ready. I got in the car, got here, had to get my pocketbook out, my cane out, bad back out, myself out, <laughs> walk up the sidewalk and come in. But when I seen the inside, I started to get cheery. And when I seen all these people, I even felt better. And then when that young lady played those songs for us she's such a talented young yes. lady now you have a good sermon and you've put the icing on the cake <laughs> no pressure no pressure i would like everybody to remember the turner family and robin yes. as this season's a little bit different a lot of it different yes I'd like to thank you, anybody and everybody that helps with this uh, online ministry because I was with you every week, and somebody has to put that together. It don't just happen. And we appreciate the ones that work and get that together. That's a great ministry. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a ministry that continues to evolve moment by moment, it seems like. <laughs> so uh, uh, we, do, we do do our best to keep trying to keep up with technology as fast as we can, and uh, hopefully in the next year we'll uh, be improving that ministry even to the next step. So uh, going from one camera to multiple cameras, views and stuff. So it's all in the works. Are there others? Let us go to the Lord. Lord, we gather. We gather each day. We gather each week, we gather whenever we are able to gather in your name, in your place, in your house, Lord. We gather so that we may bring the praises to you. We may gather to bring our heartache to you. We gather to bring our sorrow to you. We gather to ask you questions, Lord. We ask these questions because we here in this earth do not have the answers we know the answer only resides in you, Lord. And we oftentimes wonder if that answer is what we think the answer should be. But each and every day that we go forth, we know that you are with us. You are holding our hands. You are holding us up. You are keeping us, your children, guiding us each and every day so that we may live the life that you showed us how to live through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you 
to be in the family with the families of all those that are going through and recovering from medical procedures this week and in the recent past. We ask you to be with all those families that have anxiety from new diagnosis that may be in and through them and not having the answers and want, knowing what tomorrow will bring, Lord. We ask you to be with all those families that have lost over this last couple years or even longer as this season is a hard season to be in. A season in which we are told to be filled with joy and yet we are filled with sorrow and loss in our lives. Guide us each and every day to feel your love, your compassion, your loving touch each and every moment of each and every day. Guide us, Lord. That is all we can ask for, is to be guided by you, by your spirit, each and every moment of each and every day. And that guiding starts by saying the prayer that your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Romans chapter 12, starting in verse 17, and it reads as follows. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself. But leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Lord, guide me through this message and old habits die hard. When joy is our song. Lord, guide me through this message. May it be pleasing to all that hear it. May it be pleasing to you, Lord. May these words be of you and not of me. May these words share your love to each and every one that hears it. I ask this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. The Grinch has succeeded. Or has he? He has stolen all the tangible Christmas away from the children and the adults in that little town of Whoville. All that physically represents Christmas is on that sleigh, preparing to be pushed off the edge into a fantastic crash of destruction. All the things that are seen as good and joyous. The Grinch is sitting there waiting to hear the weeping and the crying of all those that have awakened to find Christmas has been stolen right out from underneath them. But that is not what happens. In fact, it is the exact opposite of that. Instead of whooping and crying, there is a song of joy, a song of love, and a song of connection, and a song of hope that begins. For the town of Whoville, Christmas came anyway, even without the stuff. Now imagine... Living as I did, 
in northern Indiana and traveling each and every Christmas day to my grandmother's house in, house in southwest Michigan. The trip would take approximately two hours or so. And I tell you this because each and every year when we made this journey, it was long for us as kids, and it seemed like a boring ride because we didn't have tablets or cell phones to play on. But this day changed. This day wasn't the typical trip to Grandma's house. We were all piled in to our first-generation Dodge Caravan. It started that drive. It started a drive that we thought nothing about. But instead, that day would change and would remain in Christmas infamy in my family forever. See, that Dodge Caravan decided to stop running on the side of a two-lane road that day. Christmas Day, we are sitting on the side of an unnamed two-lane road in front of a couple houses, but mostly just wild space, farmlands. And we, as a family, a single mom with three boys, were wondering what the next step was going, going to be. We, as the children started getting rowdy in the back seat, and my mom was frantically trying to figure out what to do, because as I said, this was the early 80s. We didn't have cell phones to call anybody. We had to look around and find a physical landline to go call somebody. Well, lucky for us, somebody was out going to a relative's house that day. And what happened was merely a Christmas miracle. They said... Come with us. So here we are, strangers in the day, on Christmas Day. And what do we do? We show up at strangers' house and invade their Christmas dinner, invade their time together as family. Three boys, restless from sitting in the car, and a single mom come and are welcomed by a stranger. I tell you this to tell you that Christmas isn't all about the stuff. As we heard in our scriptures, we're called to feed when we're hungry. We're called to drink when we're thirsty. And we're called to share that among our brothers and sisters. Now, they didn't know us at all. They didn't know our past. They didn't know our future. They didn't know anything about us, and we didn't know anything about them. But they welcomed us in and gave us a seat at their table, prospectively. I still remember sitting, looking out at the, through the plate glass window, waiting for that tow truck to come and waiting for my grandpa to come pick us up because we were sitting here not knowing anybody but our own family. But that Christmas experience has stayed with me for over 30 years because it had that meaning. It's what Christmas was truly about. It was about the love and the connection between strangers and family. Because as we were sitting there waiting, other family continued to come. And we were just welcomed into that family. We were just loved as if we were supposed to be there. The Grinch was changed that morning too. The Grinch was changed that Christmas morning that he bestowed and had that love bestowed upon him, a gift of love that I would say came from Christ, came from the Lord, even though he tried his hardest to destroy what Christmas was seen as all about. All the good, the joyfulness, all the pretty decorations, all the lights were in that sleigh teetering about. Now we don't know if it was the power of the music, we don't know if it was the power of the connection. We don't know exactly what it was. But I would say it was the power of the Holy Spirit. It came upon the Grinch and changed his heart. Changed his heart so much that the Grinch realized and saw how much wrong he had done. Saw what pain he had caused and went and wanted to repent and reconcile that pain and agony with that, fa with that town, with that, what had become a family connection now. The Who's, as they gathered and the sleigh came in, they opened up and allowed the Grinch to come in through that hole. 
Now the town could have just held that tight and not allowed them to come in. Took everything back and sent the Grinch on his way. But that's not what happened. That's not what the story tells us. Instead, the story tells us that even though the Grinch had done so much evil in that one night, he would not be let go. The love of that connectional town would be shown to the Grinch. The Grinch would be taken in and fed that roast beast that he had just stole the night before. There was a place at the table for the Grinch even after all that had been done to the Who's. They offered a space at that table for the Grinch. The Grinch didn't look like him. The Grinch didn't act like the Who's. The Grinch wasn't anywhere near what the Who's looked, acted, or felt like. But the love that was displayed that morning showed how we as Christians are supposed to react to situations like this. The Grinch, we don't know if he was hungry or not, but he was fed. We don't know if he was thirsty or not, but he had drink. We don't know exactly what happened to the Grinch at that meal, but we do know one thing. We do know that verse 21 was lived out in this life, in this story. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The Who's overcame the evil of the Grinch by doing so much good. They redistributed all of the belongings and invited him to that table. The Who's relationship with the enemy, that many of us would have a hard time and still have a hard time dealing with, was a relationship that mirrors the relationship that God has with each and every one of us. How often in our lives have we been forgiven by God? How often in our lives have we been forgiven by others? How often in our lives have we had to forgive somebody else? I lost count long ago in the times that forgiveness was shown upon me. And I've lost count how many times I've had to forgive others for what I have perceived as evils done to me. But in each and every one of those moments, it's showing that the relationship that we have with God mirrors the relationship that we have with others. We're a community of love, a community of joy, a community of peace, and a community of hope. In this season in which we as humans and as society have made things about things, about stuff, about checking off the list to make sure that each and every thing was done. Maybe we need to step back. Maybe we need to step back and look at how the Who's down in Whoville celebrated that season when all that stuff was gone. The birth of the Lord Jesus, whom we are given forgiveness from, we are given unconditional love from. We are given the hope of resurrection and new life from. And from which we are able to find joy in each and every day that we live. What relationships do we individually have that need to be reconciled these days? What relationships do we have where maybe that unconditional love has not been shared? Who is it in our lives that we need, may need to mend ties with? I can't answer that question individually for each of you. That is a conversation that must be had with the Lord and Savior through prayer, through meditation, through time. But what I can tell you is say that that relationship can be mended. There's nothing on this earth more powerful than the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And the forgiveness that Jesus Christ offers us to be able to offer up to others. So take this time, this season, this week, as we celebrate what that 
really looks like. What our lives really look like. How our lives have been changed by the love that has been shown by Jesus Christ. And think of those people in our own lives. If the who's can make room for the Grinch at their table, we can make room for anybody in our lives that we feel has wronged us, that we may feel is against us, that we may feel is our enemy. We can make room for them. They don't need to literally sit at our table, but they are connected. We are connected by the love of God, by the forgiveness that is shown through the love of God, and by the reconciling nature of our faith. And friends, each time that I offer forgiveness to somebody else for a perceived wrongdoing, they don't have to always accept it. But I can guarantee you one thing. Each time that I do that, I feel it in my heart that that connection has been made. That there's something different about that relationship. So let us go out into the midst of this weird, broken, messed up world that we live in. And may we, as God's children, show that love, show that joy, show that hope, and show that peace to each and every one that we come in contact with so that we, as God's children, can have our hearts grow three sizes larger, just like the Grinch had his heart grow three sizes larger that Christmas morn. Amen?
Hallelujah. Our Lord and Savior will be born this Christmas day. As we go out amongst this world, amongst this life, amongst this people and society, amongst the community, it is our job to know that we have Christ with us. It is our job to share that baby Jesus or that adult Christ with each and every person that we come in contact with. So as we go out today and every day forthcoming, share that love, that forgiveness, and that unconditional ability to reconcile no matter what has happened in our lives. So go forth and love each and every day. Amen? Everybody exit out the narthex, please.